We're going to continue our discussion on functions in section 2-2 and the first thing we're going to go over is the vertical line test. Here's what the definition of it is. If a vertical line intersects a graph no more than once, then the graph will be a function. So here's an example. So we have this circle here and before we determine whether it's a function, I want to review domain and range since this is a big part of the chapter. Remember the domain is what it spans along the x-axis. So this thing, the circle's diameter, is between negative 4 and 4. So if I were to write the domain, I would say the x values would be between negative 4 and positive 4, and it can equal both of those since it's equal to on each side. And the same thing for the y. The range extends between negative 4 and 4. Those are our y values, so it's the same. Now, whether it's a function or not, that's what we have to determine. So we've got to draw a vertical line. So remember, vertical lines look like this. If that vertical line intersects the graph, um, more than once, then it's not a function. So we would say not a function since it intersects the graph twice. In the second example, let's go ahead and start with finding the domain and range. So the domain is all possible x, remember, so the x extends, if I were to draw a line, from here all the way to here. And so we would say that it would be between negative 3, and it equals negative 3, since this is a closed dot right there, all the way to positive 4, but not equaling it. See how positive 4 has an open dot. The range, on the other hand, is how tall it is on the y-axis. So if I were to look at where it ranges from, it ranges from negative 5 all the way to positive 2. So we would say that since it equals it down here at negative 5, we would have the y values being equal to negative 5, but less than it looks like positive 2, since it's an um, open circle. So that's our range right there. Now, is this a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? If I were to draw a vertical line anywhere, it would only intersect the graph once. So we'd say, yes, it's a function. Some of the other things that you're going to be doing is evaluating functions. So if I were to, if you were asked to find f of 2 for this graph right here, basically they want to know what's the output when the input is 2. So if I were to go down to the graph, you would see that the output would be right here. So f of 2 would be negative 5. They just want to know what the point on the graph is when they're using function notation. So if I were to ask you what f of negative 3 was, so what's the function value or the y value when x is negative 3? You could go ahead and look, and it looks like it's right here at negative 4. It's approximate. It's not perfect. But function notation is just having you find the y values on the graph. The last part of the notes is going to be defining y as a function of x. And this is what you're going to be doing. All you're going to be doing is solving for y. So if they say y as a function of x, what that means is you want the equation to be y equals. So you're going to solve for y. And then what you want to do is graph it to see if it passes the vertical line test. So we want to see if after you solve for y and you graph it, if it actually is a function. So they're going to give you an equation, and it's not going to be in standard form or solve for y, so they'll say in fancy words, define y as a function of x. So when you were to solve this thing, you're going to bring that x cubed over to the other side by adding it, so you get x cubed minus 4. You've defined y as a function of x. So if you remember, this is a parent graph. It's a cubic that's been moved down 1, 2, 3, 4. And so all you're going to do is, if you were to sketch a graph, you would see there's your graph. And yes, absolutely, if I were to draw a vertical line, it only intersects it once. So yes, it is a function. So defining y as a function of x isn't that um, difficult. You just have to solve for y. In this next example, we want to define y as a function of x and solve for y. So we're going to bring the negative 4 over to the other side by subtracting 4 to both sides. So here's your y as a function of, and there's no x. So in this case, it's just you had to solve for y, and what you get is a horizontal line 
y equals, remember, is horizontal lines, and you have y is equal to negative 4. So what you want is, is this a function? If I were to draw a vertical line, notice it'll always cross it once, and that means it's a function. Now they're not always going to be that easy. Sometimes solving for y is kind of a pain. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and bring the x squared over to the other side. So I'll bring the x squared over. And what I end up getting is that cancels. I get y squared is equal to 9 minus x squared. And then what you want to do is to solve for y. To get rid of this square, you're going to square root. And so you have y is equal to, and if you remember, 3 squared is 9, and negative 3 squared is also 9. So positive or negative 3 will work. So when you square root here, you don't know what y is. y could be 3 or negative 3 if it was a number. So you need the plus or minus, and then you have the square root of 9 minus x squared. So this is y as a function of x. Now, you may not, and I will say this, never... If there is a plus or minus there, square root each of these separately. Like this is not equal to 3 minus x. Don't do this. It doesn't work. You leave it under the root if there's ever a plus or minus right in there. Only if you're multiplying could you square root and simplify. So if I were to graph this on the calculator, I would actually have to put in two equations. The first one would just be the positive square root of 9 minus x squared. And what you'll notice is that the graphing calculator, if you want to do this, you can try it out. It'll graph a top half of a circle from 3 to negative 3. And then you'll have to get the bottom half. Remember, it was plus or minus. So in your second one, you'll graph the negative 9 minus x squared. And what it'll do is it'll graph the bottom half. So is this a function? Well, together, remember, this is the equation with both pieces together. It does not pass that vertical line test. So it is not a function. We're going to continue with section 2-2, and this time we're going to talk about piecewise functions. So let's go ahead and start talking about its definition. So a piecewise function is a function that uses different rules for different parts of its domain. So let me give you an example of what this means. So what you'll see here is f of x equaling the first piece, the x squared minus 2 for x values less than or equal to 2. So that's the first piece of the piecewise. And then it also is 1 half x plus 1 for x values greater than 2. So this piecewise function has two pieces. So what you're going to go ahead and do is start with making a table for the first piece. So making your table of values, you're going to go ahead and do an x, and the y is the rule. So we're going to be basically um, plugging it into x squared minus 2. Now this right here tells you the x values that you're going to put in your table. This is for x values less than or equal to 2. So that would be 2, and then less than 2 would be 1, 0, negative 1, and so on. Now you know from your parent functions what this is going to look like. This is going to be a parabola that's been shifted down too, but you're only going to graph it for x values less than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and plug in 2. So if I go ahead and plug in 2, 2 squared minus 2 is going to give me 4 minus 2 or 2. 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1. Um, 0 squared minus 2 is negative 2, and negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So let's go ahead and graph that. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the first point, 2, 2, and I'm gonna make a closed dot right there because it can equal to 1, negative 1 is the next point that I'm going to go ahead and plot, and then 0, negative 2 is the next point, and then negative 1, negative 1 is the next point. And we know this is a parabola. If I were to add another point, negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. So if I want to go ahead and graph the next point, I would have this. And so basically, I have this parabola for all x values less than or equal to 2. That's my first piece. Now you notice that this thing would continue forever if I were to graph the whole thing. But because this is a piecewise, and it says um, for x values only less than or equal to 2, 
then we only graph that much. So let's go on to the next piece, this piece right here that I have in blue. So we're going to go ahead and make a table. We're going to plug in some x values into 1 half x plus 1. But this time our x's are anything bigger than 2. Now you're still going to plug in 2, even though it's not equal to it. I'm going to put a circle around it because when I graph that, since it's not equal to 2, I'm going to use an open dot. But anything bigger than 2 would be 3, 4, 5, and so on. So when I go ahead and plug in 2, I'm going to go ahead and take half of 2. And so that's 1 plus um, 1, which is 2. When I plug in 3, half of 3 is 1 and a half plus 1, which is 2 and a half. And then when I plug in 4, half of 4 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. Half of 5 is 2 and a half plus 1 is 3 and a half, and so on. So you guys remember this too. This is going to be a line, slope of 1 half, y intercept of 1, but we're only going to graph a piece of that line. So I'm going to start at 2, 2. Now this is an open circle right here because it doesn't equal 2. So we're going to put an open circle on top of that closed circle. Let me go ahead and try to redraw that again. So an open on top of the closed. And let's graph some more of the points. I'm going to graph the nice, nice ones. 4, 3 is right here. And the slope is 1 half, so this would give me all the rest of them. So for all x values greater than 2, I have that line. Now this point right here, I have an open circle on top of a closed circle. That really counts as a closed circle. So it kind of the open circle got filled in with the other one. In this next example, this piecewise function has three different pieces. So we're going to go ahead and have to make three different tables for each of these. So I'll color code them so you can see the three different pieces on the graph. So starting off with the first, we're going to go ahead and plug in x values less than or equal to 0 into x plus 4. So that's a line. So my, I'm going to graph part of that line. So values less than or equal to, be, to 0 would be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. And so when I plug in 0, I get out 4. When I plug in negative 1, I get 3. That would be 2, and that would be 1. So if I were to graph that, I'd plug in 0, 4, and it can equal 0, so I'm going to have a closed dot on 0, 4, and then um, negative 1, 3, and then um, all the other points on the graph. So I have this piece, or that graph, it's not a very good line, for the first piece of the graph. That line for x values less than or equal to 0. Next piece was we're going to make a table for this quadratic, because it's an x squared. This is saying only plug in values 0 to 2. So I'm going to do 0, 1, and 2 because it's for x values between 0, not equaling 0. See how there's no not equal there? So I'm going to circle it because anytime I circle it, that means it's going to be an open dot on the graph because it's not equal to it. So if I plug in 0, I would just get 4 here. 1, I would get 3, and 2, I would get 0. So because it doesn't equal right here, it's just x is bigger than 0, I'm going to have the point open at 0, 4. And then at 1, 3, I have this point. And then at 2, 0, I have this point. So if I were to connect it, I just get a piece of that parabola right there that's opening upside down. And then my last piece, I'm going to make a table and plug it, those values into negative x plus 4. This time it's for x values bigger than 2 but not equaling it. So I'm still going to plug in 2 and bigger than it would be these numbers. But since it's not equal to, I'm going to circle it and that's going to remind me to put an open dot at that point. So when I plug in 2, I get 2. When I plug in 3, I get 1. That's going to be 0 and that's going to be negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and plot all those points. So I have the point 2, 2 again, and I'm going to make an open circle. So let me go ahead and try to do that. And remember, it's an open circle on top of a closed circle, so it really counts as a closed circle. Um, I have the point 3, 1. I have the point 4, 0. 
Okay, I made a mistake. That point should have been at 2-2. Two, two. You're probably going, what is she doing? So let me go ahead and erase that. I plotted the wrong point right there. This point should have been at 2-2. Two, two. So I need to make an open circle at 2-2. Two, two. Sorry about that. And then 3-1 is my next point. And then 4 zero is the next point. And then so on. It follows that pattern. So here's the last piece. So there's one other type of uh, function that's piecewise that's called a step function. So what a step function is, it's a piecewise function still, so it's going to have a bunch of pieces, but this time it's constant. So what I mean by a constant, it's just going to be a number, and it's a constant for each interval of its domain. And the main thing is, is it resembles a set of stair steps. So Here's an example. So here is a step function, and this is what I meant by the constant. See how there's no x in it? It's just a number right there. So here's our first piece, and then we'll use this as our second, and last but not least, that'll be our third. So the table looks a little funky, so you're going to start by plugging in x values, and the x values always have to do with the domain. This is for x values less than or equal to negative 1, so that would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. And then what you're plugging them into is 4. So no matter what, this is the thing, is, is you're not even really plugging anything in. The output is just always 4. So you have all your points right off the bat. So if you think about it, what is this? if this was just by itself, what does y equals 4 look like? It's just going to be a horizontal line through 4, but you're not going to graph the whole line. You're only going to graph the point negative 1, 4, and below, negative 2, 4. So I'm going to take away this whole line right here, and I would only graph this part, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 4, and below, because it told me to only it only works for x values less than or equal to negative 1. So there's our first piece. The second piece is we're going to plug in x values for between negative 1 and 3, so negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so the deal is, is it doesn't equal negative 1, so I'm going to put a circle on it because it doesn't equal it, and my output's always going to be negative 2. So what I'm going to do is just graph the line y equals negative 2 between negative 1 and positive 3. And at negative 1, I'm going to have that open circle. So the reason why it's called step functions is they're all going to be horizontal steps, basically. So now we can go ahead and graph our last piece. So this is for x values bigger than 3, and so all the outputs are going to be 1. And then, so we're still going to plug in 3, but we're going to have an open circle and then go to 4, then 5, then 6. So when I have an open circle at 3, 1, I get that, and I get this piece for everything bigger than that. And that's it. So that's piecewise functions. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening.